Today, we're gonna review a long-range, budget-friendly electric bike. What makes this e-bike stand out in the pack is it's actually pretty practical. It folds, it has reasonable three-inch wide tires, and it has a massive battery pack. 32 amp hour, 48 volt. MSRP is 1400 bucks, but it is on a significant sale right now in the link below this video. Check the link to see the current price. For the money, it seems like a pretty sensible option. Let's check it out. It's called the Wildway FW11S 3.0 Long Range E-Bike. It comes in a relatively tiny box for an e-bike. It's got a suspension seat post and a super wide cushy seat and a pretty huge battery branded Wildway. 48 volt, 32,000 milliamp hours, 32 amp hours, 1,536 watt hours of energy. See how much it weighs. 18.6 pounds. Big battery, small bike, should get some long range. Wheels and tires are relatively small and lightweight, should help improve our efficiency. Three inches wide, looks like a tread pattern compatible with various terrain types. 20 inches tall, for the size and weight of these wheels, pretty large rotor, 180 millimeters. Ships with lightweight plastic fenders. And the bike feels decently light. Whoa. Yeah. Kind of tossing it around here. So on some of these folding e-bikes is even though they fold, they're pretty darn heavy. So it kind of takes away from the practicalness of it being able to be like thrown in a car. This thing's actually pretty reasonable. Especially after you remove that 18 pounds. I don't see the weight of the bike listed, so we'll get it on the scale soon, but it does say the payload capacity is 330 pounds. And that big battery is mounted kind of in the center of the bike. I found this to be nice for handling. Instead of having a big battery mounted up on the front, because if the battery is mounted up here, I find that it can cause the front suspension to kind of bottom out. Comes with a rear rack. Max capacity is listed as 18 kilograms, which is just a tick under 40 pounds. Integrated light on the rear. Hub motor on the rear is rated for 750 watts. We'll be running mechanical disc brakes, which should be sufficient for a bike of this style. Controller appears to be mounted down here. Make your life passionate. Seat has a quick release for easy, quick adjustments. Folding handlebars have adjustable height. We get ergonomic hand grips bolted in place so they won't rotate on you. Controls, display will power up soon. Seven gears on a Shimano shifter and a thumb throttle on the right. Wuxing mechanical brake levers, pretty basic, and a horn down here. We'll see what it sounds like. There is also a USB port down here to charge a cell phone or something. And a box of goodies, manual, folding pedals. Oh shoot, don't hit the lens. Quick release lever for the front wheel, makes it easy to take off. And a charger for our huge battery. Is it a huge charger? Meh. Three amps. Three amp charge rate on a 32 amp hour battery. 32 divided by three. I take about 10 hours to charge this thing from completely empty to completely full. Quick release lever is always nice on a folding e-bike. You might actually need to take this wheel off to fit it in a car or something sometimes. And we get a headlight for up front. Wow, boy. Suspension has a preload on the left and a basic open or lock adjustment on the right stanchion. Lights, fenders, pedals. I might have a little bit of cross threading going on on this pedal, hoping for the best. Mm, this isn't going well. So after it's built without the battery, weighing in at 260.4 and with no bike, 204.4. Oh man, the holiday eating got to me. So what's that, about 55 pounds with no battery? Not bad. Here's the lever to fold the bike. And just to give you an idea, in case you haven't seen this before, handlebars go down, pretty simple. Oh yeah, this one's easy, man. Very, very easy to fold up process on this bike. And here's what we're looking like when it's folded. Much easier than a fat tire bike. To get the battery in there, you gotta pop the hood. Slide it on and in there. It's got a key to lock it in place and fire it up. Close the hood. To give you an idea of the size, I am six foot five with an inseam of 34. Everything's on max height. Step through frame makes it easy to get on. Suspension seat post is not the greatest thing ever made. You could swap it out. Here's what my panel stroke would look like on maximum height. And the bars are also on maximum height. Same as Dyson. Dropping everything to minimum settings. Now all of a sudden the bike is a lot smaller. That's the beauty of these folding bikes. Good weight distribution. So let's go ahead and fire it up, see what it looks like. Oh yeah, I gotta have that key on. Boom, there we go. So we've seen this display before. It is color, battery is charged about halfway. That's your readout for battery life. And we get five levels of pedal assist to have the info button and see our odometer. Max speed, average speed, and amperage. So we can see how many amps the controller is outputting. It's a way to measure your power. And then our miles. Basic stuff, however you can, press plus and minus if you want to get into the advanced settings. Scary stuff. You need the manual to be able to operate that. Let's try the light button. Powers on this headlight and eh, you know, Fairly bright. Very basic. Also turns on a light on the back. If I pull on the brake lever, it actually works as a brake light. And then of course we have our horn. Let's see what it sounds like. 
Dang, that thing is actually pretty loud for this bike. <laughs> so it's not a speed demon. Well, let's go ahead and throw it on pedal assist five and mash the throttle. <laughs> huh, not bad. Speedometer claims we are doing 29.6. The seven gears are Shimano. There is a derailleur guard installed in case you knock your bike over. It'll protect your Shimano tourney derailleur. And the chain ring up front has a guard on both sides to help keep the chain on there. All right, dudes, let's take out the wild way. Long range, folding electric bike. We are on a full charge as indicated by the green light here. When we get back the last few seconds of this video, I will measure the actual voltage on that battery because the display here only gives us a readout right here in terms of bars. It's not gonna give us an exact readout. I'll give you a percentage on range. Which speaking of range, of course, we're gonna run the Strava app so we can track our official distance with the GPS. We're rolling on a huge, oh, we gotta put this thing in here, battery. So we'll see what kind of range we get. And they say it's a 500 watt nominal, 750 watt peak. So running lower power and a big battery, we should get some huge range out of this thing considering it's lighter with some more efficient, skinnier tires. We do have an amperage output there. <laughs> Shows 20 there. Two, 20. Let's go see how it does on the hill. If you're looking for a monster hill climber, this probably isn't gonna be your number one option, but let's go ahead and try it out on a 20% grade, pedal assist five, thumb throttle only, no pedaling, and see, let's see what it does here. Uh, 15 amps, 17 amps, 17 amps. Actually, not freaking bad at all, dude. It just climbed the hill on throttle only. I am genuinely impressed. I did not think it was gonna do that. Of course, you'd probably be pedaling a little bit, you know, if you're gonna be, you know, riding an electric bicycle. And my goodness, this thing is surprisingly torquey. So it did say 750 watt on that motor. Uh, not really sure on the exact specs on this thing, but we're about to feel it out here. So let's break out the polarized lenses. Can you see that display? through the polarized lenses. Oh yeah, I can see it. Is the light on or off? Oh yeah, so the light dims the display a little bit. Pedal to zero, we'll give you no power at all. Now this bike is kind of more on the light side. <laughs> Until you throw that 18 pound battery in there, it does add a little bit more weight. However, riding on a uh, gear, one here. You can actually get this thing rolling a little bit. The skinnier tires will uh, make it a little bit easier to pedal. They're just lighter, less rolling resistance. Let's try pedal assist one here. This is a cadence sensor. Oh my goodness, this thing freaking takes off on pedal assist one. A little bit more powerful than I was expecting. So let's see here, pedal assist one. Cadence sensor has a little bit of lag and man, it really just pulls right out from under your feet. I'm not pedaling at all really. I was just ghost pedaling there. We're already hitting 16.5 miles an hour on pedal assist one. I don't know if you can get in the settings there and kind of dial that down a little bit. This is a pretty strong pedal assist one. And I just realized I really need to raise up these handlebars and the seat and stuff. One of these nice things about um, adjustable folding e-bikes that is they are adjustable. So they can fit a more wide variety of individuals. We'll fill out this suspension seat post. It seems kind of like garbage, honestly. I'll put a link in the description box for a better one if you really want better rear suspension. So, you know, this bike's still a little bit small for me, but for something just practical, uh, you know, it'll work. Let's go ahead and bump that on pedal assist two now, begin pedaling. There's a little lag there, about a second, and man, it really kicks in. <laughs> Quite a bit more power than I was expecting. So 18 amps up to 20.5. And if we use the throttle and don't pedal, what will that do? It will give us the same exact pedal assist two output, topping us out right around 20.5, and then reducing our amps down to nine, eight, seven. And I'm definitely feeling this bike feels like just kind of more lightweight and nimble than a lot of stuff I'm used to reviewing because that battery is large but it is center mounted so you know it's really low that 18 pound battery is mounted really low and in the center of the bike so it's really optimal for handling definitely a dirty feeling bike for sure try pedal assist three so throttle uh this will take us beyond 20 miles an hour so according to the legalities this is technically you know, a little bit over class three, or class two, class three. Class two should top out at 20 miles an hour with throttle only. Same goes for class three. What I'm saying is we can go faster than 22 with throttle only, which I have no problem at all. Pedal assist three will top us out at about 25 according to there. We'll break out the GPS here shortly. And if I start ghost pedaling, giving us the same class three power output. So we are rolling on mechanical disc brakes. We'll feel them out here today. So let's go ahead and bump that onto pedal assist four, and then we'll try out the off-roading ability of this bike. So the suspension seat post, you know, is not great. It's really pretty cheap, uh, not doing too much here. But you could replace it, you know, with a higher quality suspension seat post. Oh, yeah, bounce right off the seat there. The seat is wide though, so I do like the seat that, you know, it's wide and squishy. Let's see what this thing will do on pedal assist for popping on out here into traffic. Let's roll. Oh shoot, sign. So 22, 23, 25. We'll get out the GPS here soon. 28 on pedal assist 
four only, throttle only. So I really, I can't keep up with the pedaling at this point. You know, my pedaling probably stops at about 22. Looks like the lane's about to end here, so we'll bump it on pedal assist five and see if that gives us any additional boost in current. So it's starting, going into headwind here, 18 amps of current running a 48 volt system, whatever power that would be. So, uh, you know, right around 28 miles an hour here. Lane closed. This is the benefits of an electric bicycle here. Little dirty nimbly, we can do some uh, slalom. I am noticing this motor is basically dead silent. Ooh, gotta get them mechanical brakes working. So, you know, not your number one choice for, you know, a thrilling launch. But we'll go ahead and give it a zero to 20 acceleration run, see how it does, GPS with the left hand, which means you can use your signals with your left hand, some people care about. And go. So full throttle, it gives us 10. 15, 19, 20. So yeah, relatively quick acceleration, not thrilling, definitely gets the job done and it'll get you up to speed. So again, to talk about the benefit of that lower power draw is range. You know, you really either get to choose speed or range on an e-bike. So this one, you know, is drawing less power and has a huge battery. I think we're gonna do really good on range. So let's see if the suspension is open or locked. Feels a little bit Oh yeah, I had the suspension lock. No wonder why I felt like a little bit more harsh than I was expecting. We'll improve our efficiency just a little bit here rolling in the draft behind these guys putting in some leg power. I'm on throttle. So just to be thorough in the review, we'll whip it around here, a little bit of tailwind, see what kind of high speed we can actually hit on this thing. The GPS is accurate. Let's see if the onboard is accurate. So it's giving 18 amps of current, 18 amps of current, pedal assist five, 27, 28, 27 on GPS, 29 on board, 28 on GPS. So still get 15 amps of current, 15 amps of current, 16 amps of current, 30 on here, 29. So it's still pulling, it didn't cut us off. 20, 30, so what the heck, man? This thing's going quite a bit faster than I was expecting. 30 miles an hour, still pulling 15 amps of current. 30, 30, can we get a 31? So it says 31.5 there, 30 here. Not too shabby really, but this will hurt our battery if we keep doing this, so let's let's stop. Or sorry, did I say hurt our battery? I meant to say uh, hurt our rate. It will not hurt the battery. Let's see if he makes some noise for us. With these three inch wide tires there's pretty much no chance we're going to be riding out on the sand maybe we'll give it a try the motor on this thing though is freaking silent yeah what the heck let's give it a try see what we can do <laughs> uh so yeah tires are just not wide enough it's actually uh decently torquey though more powerful than i thought it was gonna be that's a little durability out here today too. So let's see how this thing rides. I have the front suspension unlocked now. Rear suspension in the seat post. I don't know if it's doing anything or not, man. Let's say keep this one on the street. Nimble bike. Let's go see how it does out in California. It's the champion, guys. It's gonna cost a champion. Champion. Yeah, buddy. So the California incline is that hill up there. 85 feet tall. And a 12% grade. Rolling in here, we are showing five bars on the display. We'll see what kind of number it does on the battery. <laughs> Rolling into the loopy loop here on pedal assist five. Let's see if we can do full throttle. Yeah, full throttle now, so showing wrong side of the road broke. So we lot off the throttle there and it's pulling 17 amps of current, 17, 17.3 amps of current and pulling us right on up. Did not pedal at all. Slide the back side out. Oh, oh. So we'll test out the brakes here at the bottom of the California incline. Try not to crash into that wall. Full throttle. What kind of speeds will we hit? 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Pulling 18 amps of current. So it seems like it pretty much limits us at about 18 amps of current. 17.6 times whatever the voltage of battery is. Probably about 51, 52 volts right now would be how much power we're putting out to the motor. And we're hitting 19.3 miles an hour at the top of the California incline. Still pulling 17 amps of current. So pretty modestly powered by uh, it's fast though. We saw the top speed. And this dude with this camera is going to get a better shot than me, but we're just down there and let's head on down. We are rolling on mechanical disc brakes, 180 millimeter rotors, hitting 30 miles an hour on the California incline going down. And as we're barreling into the wall here, let's start giving them a try and see how well they grip. They actually work surprisingly well. Typically, you know, hydraulic disc brakes, they feel a little more linear and smooth, but uh, these are really not bad at all. I think these are actually sufficient for this bike especially at the price this bike is listed at right now i don't think you can really expect you know anything better you might just have to do adjustments on them more regularly
early than hydraulic brakes. But when it is time to do your adjustments, you can use an Allen wrench. You don't need to do any sophisticated brake maintenance like on hydraulic brakes. So it might just be a little bit easier. So let's say you get yourself in a situation, you're going about 20 miles an hour and you need to come to an abrupt stop. 20 and brakes. So they work, they're fine. Uh, they just don't feel quite as uh, powerful and linear as a hydraulic brake. They're honestly totally fine though. So I'm not pedaling at all today other than those tests in the very beginning. And we are chilling on four out of five bars right now. Pedal says two. When we get home, we'll measure the voltage so I can give you an exact readout percentage wise. I do feel like we're getting a little better efficiency on these skinnier tires that are lighter weight than uh, typical tires I ride on. So I guess now would be a good time to leave you with my final thoughts on the wild way. Folding, long range e-bike. I mean, the hub drive motor is quiet. The seat is comfortable. I feel like you could upgrade that rear suspension seat post and make a world of difference. In general, considering the price of this thing, which you can find in the link below this video in the description box, what is listed at right now on sale? I definitely feel like this is a good bang for the buck. Definitely a fair price on this e-bike. So if you did want to grab one, if you bought through that link below, you get the best price and also it helps support my reviews on Talby TV. In general, I'd have to say like what this bike is best at is something that's going to be just like practical long range you know it's not like thrilling but you know just lighter weight something you could throw in your car you know take it out somewhere you want to go for a long cruise on maybe out in a national park i don't know you name it big range medium power fairly practical electric bike at a fair price let's go check the final range on this thing check it out we have some police officers out here on the horses one horsepower no actually somebody said that's seven horsepower for a horse right this thing is one horsepower all right dude just rolling up on about 19 and a half miles almost hour 36 minutes ride time average speed 12 miles an hour and we are showing four out of five bars let's go see what the voltage is on that wild way claims four out of five let's pop the hood check ourselves multimeter claims 47.5 so that would be what around 50 percent ish 